uh, when you look statistically, that across all political spectrums, about 80% of people believe that able-bodied people who can work should work. So we just have to figure out how to get that done. And I guess I'd like to ask our witnesses, in concept, uh, do you agree that able-bodied people who can work should work? And we'll start at this end. Um, yes, I agree it's best for everyone, for the individuals. Okay, Mr. Adelson. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. So that's a great place to work from. We all agree that that should happen. And uh, the, the problem is how do we do that? And we've heard of all kinds of barriers uh, that uh, stand before us. And you know, so it's our job to solve that. Um, Mr. Adelson, within the framework of the existing funding for employment training, what changes have been made to increase the effectiveness of those funds? Or how are we making it easier for people to find work and transition into the workforce? Sure, well, these, the funds and programs you mentioned, Congressman, are really critical, and we can't leave that piece out. We, we put a lot of money into employment and training, not just in the SNAP program, but also across the board, as was mentioned. Uh, we have adult ed, community colleges, DOL, career one-stops. Uh, there's a, a lot of resources designed to help these precise individuals. And for them to really be effective, the key is that people actually utilize them. And we, we have seen problems where when these programs are purely voluntary, there's no type of requirement in place, uh, there's been very little participation. And what we really want to see is these folks utilizing all those great resources that are being provided. And so I think that's one of the key values of the work requirement uh, being in effect is it connects them to those resources where otherwise we're just loading the EBT card every month and we're not really working with them on getting back to work. Um, some of the places where it's been really effective recently, there's been a real urgency on connecting folks to a job and getting them taking that first step. We saw in Florida in particular, a lot of people took an initial first step and maybe landed at a temp agency or in fast food or retail, but that was just the first step. They quickly moved on to higher paying industries with more wages. So the, the best uh, way to make these programs effective is to get them in the door. All right, and it seems at these hearings we always hear the best case scenarios from one side and the worst case scenarios from the other side, and I, you know, I've heard that here today. You know, it, you can be uh, the group that wants to talk about successes, you can be the group that wants to talk about failures. I want to be the group that talks about successes, and we want more successes. Um, so the, some of the other witnesses have talked extensively about all the barriers uh, for able-bodied adults joining the workforce. Do you agree that, they're, that these barriers are as bad as they say, or are you more optimistic? Congressman, I think in my experience at the agency, that was one of the things that was most disappointing, is the whole system was uh, revolved around this point of view of, of what people can't do. And I think it's really important that we flip that, and when someone walks through our door asking for help with the food benefit, right away we say, all right, here's your benefit. What can we do to get you moving forward? What are you able to do? Where can we help you maybe remediate some skills, things we talked about? But we really need to come at it from the point of view that uh, these individuals are very capable. They can work. They can uh, improve their skills, their education, and meet them at that point instead of starting right off the bat by having a long list of everything they can't do moving forward. Well, I would agree. I think that we need to try to succeed, not just accept failing. And uh, thank you for your testimony, all of you, for being here. I yield back.